Hello everyone and welcome to our next art lesson. This is an artist appreciation lesson. We are going to be learning about the artist uh, Paul Klee and um, after we learn a little bit about him we are going to make our own um, creation of uh, ca a, a castle. This art lesson is called Castles in Color. Okay so let me tell you a little bit about uh, Mark Clee. Well, before I do that, actually, I need to tell you what materials to get, right, Zach? Yeah. Okay, I have Zach here. He has his materials. Really simple. Why don't you show him, Zach? So I have my, you'll need a pencil, a black crayon or color pencil, or, yeah, a black, a black color thing. A, a black color crayon is ideal for this. Yeah. And a eraser. What about your paper? And a huge paper. A huge piece of white paper. And then a lot of times it's really nice to have a piece of paper underneath what you're working on to protect the surface area that you're working on. So if you have a piece of scratch paper, this is the same scratch paper we've used all year. So we just know, keep reusing it. Dirty. It looks, I know, it's all beat up, right? I'm using my same scratch paper. And in fact, all of Zach's siblings have used that same scratch paper. And I have used my scratch paper the entire time for all the lessons pretty much, I think, that I've taught this year for all four of my kiddos. So, um, grab those materials, come on back, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the artist by the name of Paul Klee. He was born in 1879, exactly 100 years before me. Did you know that, Zach? I was born in 1979? Nope. This artist was born in 1879. He's 100 years earlier than I am. And he lived until 1940. He uh, was born in Switzerland. That is a country over in the uh, continent of Europe. You guys are studying the continents, right, Zach, mm -hmm. in first grade? So we live in the continent of North America in the country of the United States. Mark Klee lived in the continent of Europe in the country of Switzerland. And the city in which he was born in was called Bern. The city that Zach and I live in is called... You know what city we live in? Uh, Penalonga? That's where we go to school. Uh, Katati? Katati, yeah. All right, so he was born in Bern, Switzerland in 1879, a long, long time ago. And his dad was a musician and his mom was an artist, so he was really influenced by his parents in the arts, which was really fortunate for him. In the very beginning, he was a great musician. He played the violin, and he almost became a professional musician, but he changed his mind, and instead he became a professional artist. And he was known to be um, part of a movement called Expressionism. Expressionism was when you create a piece of art that doesn't quite look like something real to express how you're feeling. And you use colors to kind of give the emotion that you're feeling, okay? So he was part of that movement. He lived in a time, a same, the same time as another famous artist named Pablo Picasso. He met, the two of them met, and they knew each other throughout a little bit of their time as being artists. Let's see, um, he really focused on uh, watercolors, using ink, creating collages. Uh, explored a lot of different ways to express himself through art. Then in 1906, he married a woman named Lily, and they moved to a different country named Germany, which is still in Europe. They lived in Munich, Germany, and had a son by the name of Felix. And my research is he only had one child, Felix, okay? So he lived in an, another country, which Germany is very close to, to um, Switzerland, if you look on a map. So they moved there, and um, he was an artist for most of his life. Um, some of the things he um, he did with art, uh, he had a lot of his art displayed in museums all over Europe and in the United States. He also worked as an art teacher. Um, let's see, what else is in my notes? In 1916, he actually served in the German army in World War I. So he was in an army in Germany that was in a really big war back in the early 1900s in 1916. 
So um, that must have been a really hard part of his life. He was in the army with some other artist friends and some of his artist friends lived and some of his artist friends didn't live. And that was, that was hard for him. Um, he had his first museum exhibition. That means when you have a museum exhibition, that means that your artwork gets sent to a museum and displayed on the wall. And people come in and they pay to get into the museum. Some museums are free, but a lot of museums you have to pay to get into. And they walk around and they look at all the art. So in um, 1924, he had a, a, in New York, in the United States, the country we live in, he had his first exhibition where a lot of his work was displayed on the walls for people to come and see. Um, he became a professor in 1926, a professor of art. Um, he taught at several different um, places that teach about art. Um, and then, it, in my notes, I have that in 1933, he fled Germany. So when you flee from one place to another, it means you're trying to escape from something that's dangerous. So he left Germany, and during that time, that was around the time where a lot of really tough things were happening in Germany, and um, he, he left Germany probably scared for, for um, his safety, and he went back to Switzerland. Um, and he pretty much lived out the rest of his uh, life there, and he died in 1940 when he was 60 years old. Uh, for us now, that's kind of young in our, in our time, but that was a very good long life for that time. Um, at, when he died, Zach, can you guess how many pieces of art he had created? 1,000. That's a really good guess. So you think 1,000? Guess what? What? It's 1,000 times 9. So it's 9 1,000s. 9,000. 9,000. He had 9,000 pieces of work, uh, artwork that he had created. Okay. Oh, 8,000 more. All right. You ready to get started? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this right here is called Castle to be Built in a Forest. Do you, do you see a castle there? No. It's kind of hard to see a castle there. Well, it doesn't look like, like a real castle, does it? <coughs> It doesn't look like a castle at all. It doesn't look like a castle at all. So it, with expressionist art, sometimes it does not, a lot of the times it does not actually look like what we uh, see in real life. Okay, so this is his piece of artwork and it's called A Castle to be Built in a Forest. And he um, created this in 1926. Do you see the colors he used here, Zach? Mm -hmm. What do those colors make you think? Do, do they make you think of, um, like what kind of emotions might you feel when you look at those colors? Is it happy, excited, sad, lonely? Happy. Happy, okay. So Zach looks at this and he himself feels happy. So that's kind of the point of expressionist art. It's not only to express yourself and how you feel, but it's also to have the person who's looking at your art, um, it create a feeling in that person. So Zach says that he feels happy. I'd like you guys right now to think about what you feel when you see this piece of art right here. Okay, uh, here's another piece. This one is called Threatening Storm right here. And this was in 1927. If you see the difference between the colors, right? These are more yeah. bright and vibrant colors. What do you think about those colors? What do you think, Zach? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. You don't know, so, and it's okay not to know. You can look at something and go, mm, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. What, you want to know how I feel about it? Oh. Okay, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, mm, those are kind of dreary colors. Kind of feels like, like a cloudy, gloomy day to me. So for me, I kind of feel like gloomy and cloudy. But that's me, okay? <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our own castle, all right? But we're going to kind of create a castle in the likeness of how we normally see a castle because we're first graders and that's a little bit more fun. And then what we're going to do after we create our castle for video number two, we're going to use watercolor and we're going to color watercolor our castle and our background with all different kinds of colors, colors that maybe you would never see in a castle depending on how you feel. Sound good? 
Yeah. Okay. Do you want to read and remind everyone um, how to get in a positive mindset, buddy? Number one. Number one, always try our best. Number two, if you get frustrated, take a deep breath. Count to ten. Take a deep breath and try again. Number three, everyone's artwork will turn out differently. Your art is uniquely yours. Number four, art is not perfect. And my sister Sarah made this one up. Um, always have fun. Yeah, let's try to have a good time. All right, Zach, you ready to start our um, castle? Okay, all right, so get your paper out. I have my paper, Zach has his. All we need right now is a pencil and our eraser in case we want to erase some lines and then a black crayon. The eraser and black crayon can go off to the side. And the very first thing I want you to do is write your name. So I'm writing my name. Anywhere on the back, big enough so um, your teacher can see it and nice enough so that they can read it. Turn it over to the back. Turn it over so it's on the other side now, and I cannot see your name because we're gonna mount these um, hopefully in portfolios. Okay, now let's get started. Okay, I am gonna show you some examples of other student work. Okay, so this one's Sarah's. Here's Sarah's castle, and her castle looks like it's on an island with a big bridge going out over water with a rainbow in the sky. So that's her castle. And then this one is Sammy's. I did not start doing this lesson until Sammy was in first grade, so we don't have one for Joey. That's okay. There's um, Sammy's. Oh, I'm sorry. This one's Sarah's. The other one you just saw was Sammy's. I mixed them up. Sarah, there's Sarah's name. This one's Sarah's, okay? So did you notice how uniquely different Sarah's and Sam's were? Yeah. They're not anything alike, okay? So we're gonna create our own castles. I'm going to show you two that I've done. Mom, the rainbow, I think, was just like the sun thing. The sun. Oh, is that like a right. setting sun? Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, here's my castle. I, I created a castle, but I didn't watercolor it yet. I just did a huge, ginormous castle to cover my entire composition. I need to copy that. But in your own style, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got... Zach's dad starting the car outside, driving away. <laughs> um, okay, so that's one. And then this one I started, but I, I didn't really get very far. Okay, so I was starting with like a bridge going over to a, I, I did a little tower here, and then I was going to create like the main part of the castle here, but I didn't quite get, get around to finishing it. And then this is a little path. So you see there's all different ways to create a castle. If you have books at home with castles in them, you can pause the video and go get those books. If you have puzzles with castles that you want to look at, you can go get that. If you want to do a quick Google search and look up some images of castles, you can do that. That would just mean that you need to pause the video, go do that and come back if you're looking for inspiration. Otherwise, let's get started. You ready? Okay, so grab your pencil. You already have your name on the back. Double check. Is your name on the back? Yep. Okay. Wait. Your name's on the back, right? Yeah. Okay, my name's on the back. All right, let's get started. So castles usually have a big entrance to, to get into them. So I might start um, with a big half circle. Remember when we're drawing, we think about lines and shapes to guide us. So here's my half circle. Okay. And then I can close up my half circle like that. And that can be the entrance into my castle. I can make a tall wall. And creating that tall wall, I just used a square. And you don't have to follow me, Zach. You can do your own however you'd like, or you can follow along with me. It's your choice. Okay? Um, so, and then uh, castles usually have some towers that... I was going to do that. You're going to do a tower? And when yeah. I think of towers, I think of long, tall rectangles. Okay, there's a tower there. And then I could even have a wall of my castle going back. So it makes it look three-dimensional. So in order to make a building look three-dimensional, you can slant the wall using, um, you can use lines that slant back like that, and then you can close it up. So this is another um, uh, rectangle that I slanted like that. I could even do um, 
another tall tower here with a rectangle like that. And if I mom, want, you, mom, look yeah. in the middle of this, I'm going to go like this. Put this, and then do a little black. Oh, I love it! I love it. Now we are only doing a castle. We're not doing any people or animals or characters of any sort. We are just drawing a castle and anything to do with a castle. Okay, since I had my castle looking like three dimensional with the line, with the with the um, wall going back, I can add another tower in the back. Hey, that's what I was going to do. So there's my tower in the back over here, and I can even add another tower back here, like that. And so I can have four towers, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I can even add, I can add a bridge that's going over a big moat if I wanted to. So here I can have a bridge going off to the side, off my paper like that. And there could be, I can make this have water right here, or I could just make it um, be a big ditch, a big trench, because a lot of times castles would put moats around, kings and queens would put moats around their castles so that people had a difficult time invading them. Okay, so now that I have my basic structure of my castle, I can start adding my details. A lot of castles were made using bricks and stones. So I'm gonna show you a strategy that I use to make bricks and stones. So first, I'm gonna make a little border around my front door of my castle using- Hey, me too. <laughs> you're gonna do that too? Okay, yeah. using some little rounded squares or ovals, I can make it look like those are stones going all the way around the door or entrance of my castle like that. Remember, you're creating however you'd like. You can Mom, follow my lead or you can be doing Mom, your own are we version. Gonna stop this before we finish the black coloring. No, we're not gonna color, we're just gonna outline. After we're done creating. Wait, the black hole, but we need to trace it with black, remember? We're gonna trace with black. We're not gonna color, we're gonna trace. Okay. Yes, that's how we're gonna end the video. Okay, so I did some I did uh, some um, stones around the front entrance, and now I'm gonna show you how I can create some a look of the effect of having bricks um, on my castle uh, facade. The facade is the, the front of your castle, okay? The What the outside looks like in the front. So look what I did here. I did straight lines across. So if lines are going from side to side, those are called horizontal lines. So I'm going to do a, all these horizontal lines going straight across. And here I'm going to pick up my pencil and I'm going to pretend like there's a line going and then I'm going to keep going. So I'm just gonna do horizontal lines straight across. And remember, this is these are just suggestions. You don't have to follow everything I do. Now, I have my horizontal lines. Now I need to do my vertical lines in order to make it look like they are made out of bricks. So look, I do a line, a line, a line all the way across. I just do them evenly spaced. They don't have to be evenly spaced. Bricks aren't always evenly the same exact length and width, but these are in my, in, in this um, piece that I did here. So I'm going to do the first set of um, vertical lines coming down. Now, if I want to have the look of a brick, I, then my next lines, they don't go straight down from the lines above. You stagger them. This is called staggering. So I did a line and then I leap over that line and I do another line. Then I leap over that line, another line, I leap over all the way across, okay? I do the same thing. The, the lines that I did on the pattern up above the one I just did, I'm gonna follow those lines. So, so that line went like this, pick up my pencil, come down, that line came down, I'm following that. So this is one strategy you can use to do to create bricks. If you need to rewind the video and watch that again, I might have explained that a little bit fast, so if you need to rewind, then go ahead and rewind. Otherwise, keep on going until you have the front of your castle done. And you just keep going, you keep adding 
different details. So here I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna create the top part of my castle where the soldiers, the lookout guard soldiers would be. So the way that I'm gonna, it's this right here that I'm gonna do. So see these little, hole, these little areas right here? This is where the soldiers would peek out if they needed to protect the castle and they could protect from those little peek out areas. So I'm gonna go out. I, need, I think I need to erase a little bit more. I'm gonna go across and then up, across, down. Across, up, across, down. Across, up, across, down. Across, up, across. Okay, so I made my little lookout stations for my soldiers guarding. I can do the same thing up here. I can do other lookout stations up here using that same technique, right? And I can do that on all of my towers. How are you doing, Zach? Great. Okay, are you liking how yours is looking? Yep, look. Can I show them yours? Okay, yep. let's show them yours. Okay, here is Zach so far. And Zach is starting to add some windows. And what, what shape did you use for those windows? Triangle. Triangle. So Zach is using basic shapes. He also added a flag. So go ahead and just keep designing your castle however you'd like. I made my towers too tall in order to get my little lookouts posts here. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna catch up with Zach and I'm gonna start making windows. So I can make half oval windows. I can do a triangle window. I can do a long rectangular window. I could do a square window. I could do so many different shapes for windows. And then I could go in here and I could add little bricks if I wanted to using squares. See how I just did a couple bricks there? I could do a couple bricks over here. Okay, and I can do some bricks over here. And I'm just using Mom, a bunch of different Mama, squares. I'm gonna um, put this. A gate? Yeah, I'm, so I'm Zach gonna put is, the gate. Zach is gonna start working on his gate. Okay. So I'm just doing a bunch of squares. I'm gonna finish up my, my wall over here with my bricks. Okay, so I feel very confident and, and happy with the way my castle has turned out. I can add a flag if I want to. I can add some, um, a gate right here. Right, so these are my bars. I can have these be my bars. Okay, mom, look. Wow, that looks beautiful. Okay, so those are my bars going down. Zach looks like he's done. I, I'm pretty much done with my design. So the next step and the very last step that everyone's going to do, and I am not going to have you watch in, in me do the entire thing because I know you can do this on your own. I want you to pause the video if you're still designing your castle. And I want you to pause the video if you're still designing your background around your castle. For instance, if you have something like what... Sammy did where he put his castle on an island with an ocean behind him go ahead and do that if you did what Sarah did where she did her so big she doesn't have anything behind it and that's fine too and then just a sun so decide how you want your castle sun. yeah decide how you want your castle to end in your background press the pause button and finish entirely and when you're done finishing with your pencil I want you to press the play button and come back. Do you think everyone's back? Yeah. Do you think everyone pressed play because they're done finishing their yeah. design of their castle? Yeah. Okay, so if you're back with me and Zach, that means that you're done designing your castle. Now, you're gonna take your black crayon and you, with patience and with a lot of accuracy, that means you're trying really hard to stay on your lines, I want you to start 
tracing your pencil lines. So the point... I'm, I'm going to start right here. Look, yes. Here. Now, Zach, do you think I want you to go super fast? No. Or do you think I want you to go super slow? Super slow. Okay. I want you to go super slow right now. And I want you to go super dark. So I want to make it so that I can't see your pencil line. I want you to make it. So I, when I see your your art, I don't want to see your pencil line. So you're going slow and you're being as accurate as you can. So trace all your pencil lines. But look, see how I trace that? And Zach, look, I think I could trace it darker, okay? I'm gonna trace it darker because the next video, we're gonna come in with watercolors and we're gonna watercolor over everything. And we wanna make sure that our crayon is seen even though we watercolored it. So this is called crayon resist. That means you are pushing hard on your crayon and you're creating a really strong, bold line. Not so hard that you break your crayon, but push hard enough on your crayon. Joey, Joey. Push hard enough on your crayon so that I, A, I can't see. Number one, I cannot see your pencil line. And number two, after we watercolor over it, I'm gonna be able to see your bold black crayon. Okay, so when you look at, we're gonna wrap it up here. When you look at this work right here, it's not black, it's actually white that he used, okay? But you can see that bold white, can't you, Zach? Mm -hmm. Here he used black. See that black bold? And you can really see it even though he painted over it. So everyone, to end your lesson, I'm gonna sign off and Zach is gonna say goodbye too. You're gonna finish by tracing with your black crayon. You're gonna put your artwork away in a very special place that you have your name on the back. You're gonna put your crayon back in your crayon box, your pencil and your eraser away. You're gonna clean up your workstation. And next video, number two and the last video, it's video number two and the last, we are gonna have our paper totally done with our black tracing. And then, slow down please, slow down. Um, and then we're going to bring our watercolors in and we're going to paint the whole thing. Okay, sound good, Zach? Yeah. Okay, all right. Zach, I'm going to show them where you are. Let's see, let's show them where you are, Zach. Okay, that's where Zach is and he's going to keep working until he has all of his pencil lines traced. All right, Zach, you want to say goodbye? Bye. We will see you for the next video.